Son of a Bob here. In this video, I'm just going to talk basically about the home screens on Windows Phone 8 and Android 4.4, or any Android device for that matter. Now, as you can see, Windows Phone 8, they brought in from Windows Phone 7 resizable tiles. That's similar to widgets being on Android, which have been there for a very long time. Widgets themselves are resizable. For instance, I can hold this one down and then I can minimize it to a smaller version if a smaller version of that widget is available. Now with these, I can just hold one down, tap to shrink it, wait, or tap to increase the size. And right now, there are three sizes for Windows 8. Tiny, normal, and then large. But you still have one screen. You can customize the way you want. Now, one thing that I do like by Windows Phone over Android is the ability to, per to pin a particular artist or album or playlist or whatever directly to the home screen. That feature does not exist in Play Music. Okay, I can have the music widget right there if I want to play, skip, like a song, or just tap the artist to go into the music application. But I cannot pin my favorite albums to the home screen, at least not out of the box. If there's a third party application that allows me to do this, I'm not aware of it. But out of the box, I can pin almost anything to my home screen. That includes favorites, bookmarks. Applications. Some applications allow large sizes, some of them allow smaller sizes. But I can pin almost everything to the home screen. Now, I can pin any application icon to the home screen with my Nexus 5, but not every application has an available widget. That may be a big deal to some. It's definitely not that much of a big deal to me, other than pinning albums. If I'm in the car, I want to play my favorite album. When I jump in the car with my Nexus 5, I have to sift through my library, look at my recently played music, and go through a list of artists just to find which album that I want to play. Whereas on my Windows phone, I'm already there. And as you can see, that's another feature that I definitely have on here for uh, battery saving preferences. When I lock the phone, I can double tap it to unlock it so that way it doesn't accidentally unlock in my pocket. I can double tap to take it off of the darker screen that you saw with the less brightness to the actual lock screen and then swipe up to unlock if I want to. Now this may seem a little bit more tedious but if the only thing I want to do is pull my device out of a pocket to see what's going on with it then yeah it's definitely a good feature and this is the screen right here. Additionally there's another screen when it's completely off I can just swipe my hand over the proximity sensor and it'll bring me to this screen just so I can see what's going on if I want to say hey what time is it or if I see if I have any notifications see what my battery percentage is right now if I want to do that and it does it automatically if you pull it out of your pocket so if I have my device sitting on the desk and I just want to say hey what time it is boom it'll show me what time it is but if I pull my device out of my pocket the sensor will automatically kick in and then it'll go out Then I can put it back in my pocket and if I want to open the device double tap swipe to unlock call it a day if you don't have a password it'll be that easy if you do have a password, you put the password in. But the other thing about Windows Phone is that when I put my password in, it automatically unlocks on the correct password, whereas Android, you have to hit the enter button. I agree that that's more of a safety feature, so that way the person doesn't really know if the, if the password they're entering is correct. They have to say enter just to choose whether or not. And if someone happens to get the password right, they automatically unlock the device. But that's really semantics at this point. That's kind of just saying which one is better by a millimeter. Either way it's much more simple to deal with Android on the whole but you can always turn the settings off that I showed you on the Nokia device but here that's my home screen right here the, the applications that I commonly use whereas on Android you kinda just wanna fill screens up because you have the ability to fill screens up but at the same time um, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more information on my Windows Phone device, with the exception of not having folders. That's one key feature that Android has had for a long time that is definitely paramount. Um, I can pin everything here and I can minimize my icons if I want, but I don't currently have folders. Now I know that they're coming in, in, the, in, the re excuse me, in a future update, but they're not here now. I can get so much information inside of my folders right now with Android, it's ridiculous. You know? But if I want my Android device to look pretty, I can definitely slap on a bunch of widgets as I have here. There you go. This is kind of like my media page. This is kind of like my social networking slash get everything done page. 
and this is remind me what it is that I need to do with my life page okay there's nothing wrong with any of those things and as far as applications are concerned here on the Nexus 5 specifically the app drawer is just all full of applications there's no reason for me to scroll through it's just a bunch of applications um, on my Nexus 7 however you can keep scrolling to the side and you'll eventually get to the widgets which you can still hold from the home screen to get to the widgets as well thing about Windows Phone a little more simple and it's easier to get to those things and as you can see both of the devices have the applications in alphabetical order yes but with Windows Phone I can just tap that bring up every application installed under a corresponding letter and just zap to that letter if I want to open up the YP mobile app on my Windows Phone I can do so very quickly if I wanted to do that on my Android phone I'd have to swipe all the way to that screen now Again, not that big of a deal, but it's just one of those small features that kind of makes it easier for the end user. The user interface for these two devices are going to be particular to whoever's using it. But on the whole, I like some of the accessibility features on Windows Phone a little bit more. But as far as power, performance, and overall customization, Android definitely wins in that regard. But this video is definitely pretty long. Thank you for watching. If you're still watching this long, son of a bob.